Hi, I'm Scott Stanfield, and I'm on Microsoft's Project Bonsai team. And we've built a system for you to define, train, and deploy intelligence for autonomous systems. We call this intelligence a brain. It's an AI model that makes decisions in real time. But unlike machine learning that's used to predict and perceive things like what's in an image or speech recognition, these brains are responsible for controlling actions that affect the future. The brains make decisions about what to do in real time. So it's a lot more like classic control systems. Think your car's cruise control or a commercial refrigerator. Those systems are found all over heavy industry and manufacturing lines or in logistics optimizations. And they work well when all the parameters are known but have trouble dealing with uncertainty. And that's where brains come in. So what do we need to build a brain? Uh, we have our deep reinforcement learning engine that's running in Azure. We have a simulator. Well, actually, you provide the simulator for your system or your data. And then with your human expert, maybe it's you, you line up the sensors and the actions and the goals of what you're trying to achieve. And then the brain is trained through practice many times against the simulation in Azure. So the sum total of all this we call machine teaching. It can make snack food faster, align CNC machines or smelts aluminum more efficiently, and it can even balance ping pong balls. So let me show you how with this example called Project Moab. This is a little robot that we built to really as a training tool to teach you how machine teaching works. In fact, I'll break it down for you. So it's a very simple scenario where we're trying to eventually teach this robot how to balance a ping pong ball on a plastic plate. And this scenario is straightforward enough because you can identify with it um, as a person. Um, you can see that if I tell you the goal, remember I said goals earlier, the goal is to keep the ping pong ball in the middle uh, without it falling off. So very simple, keep the ball in the middle without it rolling off. And I am looking at the ball, that's my sensor, and my actions are my fingers moving the plate up and down. And that has a real analog with this plate here. I have it in manual mode. Uh, let me activate it so it comes up. And I can move this little stick around and you can see as I move it around, it responds to that. And right now it's operating in kind of dumb mode. It's just me steering it by hand, um, which is hard to do. But what I'm gonna do is ask my assistant to turn the light off Let's run it in this kind of classic engineering mode. And you see it has no trouble doing it. And that's because it's using a combination of its sensors and the actions. Really, it's a PID controller. And it's been trained, or not trained, it's been engineered to bring the ball to the middle. Now, this is a straightforward mechanical engineering exercise. The math behind it's pretty difficult, um, especially the kinematics. But there's another way to do this, and that's with a brain. So using the same system, I'm going to activate another mode called the brain mode. Now this system didn't know anything inherently about Moab. It was, uh, we have a simulation of, this, of the mechanics of the system, and it knows about two things, the sensors and the motors, but it doesn't inherently know how to keep it balanced, yet it does. And that's because it learned through many, many iterations of trial and error, kind of the underlying uh, things to do given the location of the ball and how to bring it back to center. So uh, this is an example of, of something that you can do even without having a physical robot because we have a simulation of it online. Uh, I'm going to now take you through a demo where we're going to do the whole thing, but from scratch. So let's go to that. So here we are in the Azure portal and you can see that we have a a bonsai workspace already created. So I'm going to launch that. And when it comes up, I can choose from this dialogue. I'm gonna choose the, the built-in simulation here, the built-in scenario, which is Project Moab. And when I click it, you can see it's going to predefine an inkling script for me already that has a few things already defined. Let me go through a couple of these for you. So the first is the section around the sensors. And you can see we have one sensor and it's coming from the camera and that's the X and Y position of the ball. And then we have an action space to change the tilt and the roll, the X and Y dimension. So given that input and our outputs, we now go down to here where we define our goals. And this is, this is really cool because our goal here is to keep the ball on the plate. So we want to avoid falling off the plate, but at the same time, we want to drive the ball towards the middle. And with that little bit of code within the goals, plus the connection to the simulator, now granted, there had to be a simulator for it, but with the connection to all of these in place, we can hit the train button up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start training and we'll let it get spun up. 
Okay, now we're back. It's been training for a few minutes and we can kind of see where, uh, how it's doing, how it's progressing along the combined goals. And with a little bit more time, we come back and see that it's figured out how to balance the ball. It's figured out how to nail the goals 100%. So we can stop the training, we can export the brain, and it's going to create a Docker container that we can now pull down directly onto our Moab. So now I'm inside the Moab unit, it's just a Raspberry Pi, and inside I can launch the wire up the Docker container to when it restarts to use that brain that I've already installed. And when I restart it, and if I go back to the brain mode, we have our new brain that's running on the Moab unit and it's balancing it just like it learned how to control it in the simulator. This little cheesy snack food is delicious. And there's a manufacturer who's making these puffy snack foods that are made in an extruder. Now, an extruder is a screw that heats up things under pressure. And you may have played with one of these as a kid, Play-Doh. An extruder is used everywhere to take plastic pellets, uh, to make like the shell of this Moab, they're used to make soap. In this case, we take cornmeal, and the cornmeal gets pushed through an auger and compressed and heats up. And as it heats up, it's exiting this extruder and pops up and puffs up to shape as it cooks. Now, as you can imagine, there are lots of variability. Um, what makes this difficult to control in a semi-line is uh, the, the cornmeal or the mixture itself, um, depending on how it's grown, might come in with a different uh, temperature or, or uh, moisture content. And so things can get sticky and they clog up the interior pipes of the machine. And so you have someone that's on the line changing the knobs and controlling the system. And it takes, takes years to get good at it. Um, this is kind of a repetitive experience, but you need to handle all these cases. So. This company took data from the pilot plant and using a couple techniques, they created a simulation environment that we could train. So the brain practiced on these simulations in a bunch of conditions. And coming out of it, we got certified as a, as a medium expert operator. Um, now the circumstances are, are interesting, but they work extremely well. I've got three quick links for you to learn more. The first is aka.ms slash bonsai to learn more about the technology that makes all this possible. Project Bonsai, there you'll find the documentation and a tutorial that you can follow along to do all this on your own time. Number two, aka.ms slash Moab, where you can learn more about this little robot. You can see the documentation for it, look at the source code, see some behind the scenes how we made the robot work. And finally, the third link is aka.ms slash AI lab projects. And that's a collection of all kinds of great ways that we're using innovation and AI at Microsoft. So again, thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing what you build with our technology.